Good morning, Highlands. It's Thursday, January 28th. I'm Jacob Makowski. And I'm Daniela Suarez. Today's show is exciting as we look into why we weren't back into school after winter break. We're also going to see how our very own Mrs. Goldberg made it onto a PBS documentary and all about a new popular winter treat. And in case you missed it, a rundown of the presidential inauguration. Missed the inauguration last week? No worries. Here's a look back at an event that was different than any other in history and almost didn't happen at all. January 20th, 2021. A historic day for America as it was the inauguration of the 26th president of the United States, President Joe Biden. The 46th president of the United States, Joseph R. Biden Jr. This was not any ordinary inauguration as it was the first time in 152 years that the former president has skipped the inauguration of the president-elect. President Trump tweeted on January 8th, to all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. However, the ceremony was attended by former Vice President Mike Pence, along with his wife and former second lady, Karen Pence. This was a special day for America, and one of the most remembered moments was a poem delivered by Amanda Gorman titled, The Hill We Climb. This poem touched the heart of many people and took us one step closer to unity. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. Right after the inauguration, Biden wasted no time as he signed 17 executive orders, nine of which were direct reversals of policies enacted by Donald Trump. As of January 26, 2021, President Biden has signed 33 executive orders, 12 of which reversing policies set by Trump. And now for some exciting news from our very own Northern Highlands math teacher, Mrs. Bradley. On January 22nd at 10.24 a.m., we welcomed another little Highlander to the community as baby Aaron Aleta Bradley was born. Little Bradley came in at 8 pounds, 3 ounces, and 20 and a quarter inches. Mom and Aaron are doing great. Everyone on the NHTV staff would like to congratulate and wish Mrs. Bradley and her family the best of luck. Towards the later part of last year, we had many students who volunteered their time to spread goodwill. The volunteer work hasn't missed a peep this school year as twin sisters Serena and Simran Duffer continue their work with Love for Our Elders, an organization that writes and sends kind, uplifting letters of love to local senior citizen communities to help combat loneliness and bring some joy to their lives. During this pandemic, Serena and Simra haven't been able to volunteer at their local senior facility and realize that these times are even more challenging for our seniors who have feel neglected and lonely. So once again, Serena and Simran will host a letter drive at Highlands and collect letters for the elderly. And it is asked that each student create a minimum of two letters, including coloring, drawing, and writing. When you're finished, leave your letters in a box near the outside of the school, no later than February 28th. If you have any questions, email dufferss at st.northernhighlands.org. And we missed it last show, but here is NHTV reporter Nicholas Lino showing how our very own librarian, Mrs. Goldberg, gave it onto a PBS documentary. One of Northern Highlands' own teachers was interviewed recently in a documentary. Here's Miss Goldberg. The people making this film wanted commentary from a librarian, and because I'm very active in my community, where I live in Rockham County and also in Westchester, uh, somebody said, oh, I know a librarian, a school librarian, I'll get in touch with her. So it was kind of like a friend of a friend. Um, so I actually didn't even realize at first that it was PBS and American Masters. I just thought they were making a documentary and wanted some commentary from a librarian. I only kind of understood a couple weeks before the shoot that this was a, a big deal, that it was American Masters and it was going to be on PBS. From the time that I recorded my interview, which was in October of 2019, to the time I even found out that they were going to use the footage was 10 months and I had already pretty much forgotten what I said or what they asked me. They had warned me that they interview many, many people and that not everybody gets into the documentary. Once I knew I was going to be in it, then, then I got excited. If you watched it, you know that my part doesn't come on until over an hour into it, and I didn't know that. So as I was watching, I was very interested in the story because I had been a big fan of both Little House and the Prairie books and TV show when I was a child, and I had also read them to my own children. So um, I was happy to be learning a lot, but after the first hour, I thought, is this wrong? Am I actually not in this documentary? And then when my part finally came on, that was exciting, but it went by very fast. They 
produce an enormous amount of content and then very, very carefully select only what they feel are the parts that really best tell the story that they want to tell. So that was what I learned and um, I was very happy to learn it and I'd love to do it again. As you can see, this was a very critical moment in Highlands history as it is very cool to see one of our teachers on mainstream media. Chilly weather means sweatshirts and sweatpants season. And if you want a pair to add to your collection, now is the time to buy since Relay for Life is now having its winter apparel sale. They're offering hoodies, sweatpants, and masks. 100% of the proceeds from the sales will go directly to NH Relay for Life. To buy the apparel, click on the link posted in the description below. After you filled out the form, you can Venmo at NH-Relay-2020 with your name apparel sale in the description. If you cannot Venmo, email weiner-s at st.northernhighlands.org for other payment options. In other Highlands news, this past weekend, 22 students participated in the virtual Yale Model UN conference. The conference normally takes place over four days in New Haven, Connecticut, with a few thousand students from around the world. Now, students are participating via a platform of virtual meeting rooms. They did a tremendous job and had three award winners. Best Delegate was won by Abi Dahada and Luke Abuladze, and Jessica Gao won the award of Outstanding Delegate. I apologize for your names. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and if you've been having trouble finding a gift for that special someone, it's your lucky day because the UNICEF Club is hosting a Valentine's Day grand fundraiser. For just $6, you can have a Valentine's Day themed goodie bag filled with treats stickers, and a personalized note be delivered to a friend's doorstep. Everything could be COVID safe and all the proceeds will go to the UNICEF club efforts to curb child su suffering in underprivileged areas. If you would wish to order one, look for an email sent by Sonia Sadarangani and fill out the form. After you fill it with the form, you can Venmo N-A-R-E-S-H dash Sadarangani by Friday, February 5th. Just remember to be Valentine's Day Graham to the Venmo line. Now let's head to tie with sports. Thanks, Danielle. With the basketball season coming soon, let's take a look at one of the top basketball players here at Highlands. Billy Corman will be entering his third year on varsity for Highlands after transferring from Bergen Catholic after his freshman year. He was the leading scorer last year for a Highlands team that played a very tough schedule. Corman was named the MVP of the BIT tournament in which he dropped 19 as he led Highlands to the championship, defeating Cliffside Park in overtime 61-55. Carmen believes that the team will have a very strong year this year. He says that it will be a bit challenging for the team during the first couple of weeks because the team needs to adjust under the new coach. And with the delayed start, the team only has one week to learn the new system. However, he feels the team still has the same goal, and that is to win. Carmen looks to reach 1,000 career points this year and to make an all-county team, but his main goal of the team is to win the league championship. That will be a tough task considering how strong the league is, but Highlands is definitely a contender. Carmen is known for being lethal from behind the arc, but he feels his best ability is to make his teammates around him better. When asked about his success on the court over the last two years, he said, I've grown so much both as a player and a leader since sophomore year. The main thing that led me to my success on the court is my obsession with winning. I hate losing. This pushes me in the season and in the offseason. But all three years I've been in the program, I believe I've shared that attitude with my teammates, and we have all bought into that. Highlands kicks off the season on February 2nd against Indian Hills. That's all for Highlands Sports for today. Now let's head to AJ who does the weather forecast as only he can. AJ? Once upon a time. There was a village that lived in an era of peace. Life was perfect for the people of Lindo. The weatherman was one with the four elements and was able to predict their actions. His abilities brought balance to the world, but that all changed when the evil dictator Nightshade Crow terrorized the village. The only way to stop Nightshade was for someone to say what the weather was for that day. Tomorrow, and the following next three days. Only the weatherman could stop the ruthless Nightshade Crow, but when the world needed him the most, he vanished. 
thankfully, somewhere in the middle of the forest rests an all-powerful magical sword that grants its user the ability to tell the weather. But only one who has a pure heart and the will to do good can wield the blade. Until then, Nightshade Crow reigns as the supreme <laughs> evil dictator of Linda. Or is he? I heed evil dictators, especially those who mess with my own town. Oh, I'm gonna stop that monster and save them all, if not for me, for mom and dad. Oh, how could I forget the last things they said to me? Run, help! help me We're on stop. fire! Help Quick, me. go find the sword. And how could I forget what Uncle Carson said? No! I'm gonna bring them to justice and save them now. Post haste, the hero set out on his journey for the sword foretold in legends. But unbeknownst to him, some trickery lies ahead. First answer my riddles three. Where does the goose fly when the sun? Ow! Ow! What the heck, man? Was that really necessary? Was it? I stand here all day in this backyard and I wait for someone to come by so I can tell them my riddles. I don't even get paid. Or you can't just go around and throw rocks at people. It's not cool. I don't even care about the riddle anymore, just go. You ruined it. AGL Walia, and this is your weather forecast for today. Today will be partly cloudy, with the temperature hitting a high of 30 degrees and a low of 14 degrees. So get those scarves ready, but hold on. Tomorrow, it will be mostly sunny, with strong wind. The temperature will be hitting a high of 21 degrees and a low of 12 degrees. On Saturday, it will be sunny, and on Sunday and Monday, it will snow. the weather flowing inside of me. This sword, it gives me the power! In the end, the young adventurer overcame the obstacles in his path and unearthed the blade of legend and took down the evil Nightshade Crow. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. And now let's head to Matthew with another episode of Entertainment Now. Um, excuse me, Mr. Is this the producer's office? 
<laughs> oh, come now. No need to be so formal. I wouldn't expect that from my nephew's best friend. You may call me M. Matty Matgrave. Or Matgrave, if you like. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Matgrave. Sir. Actually, I, I wanted to ask you about your nephew. Matt too? Oh, he's such a great boy. <laughs> such talent on such small, tiny shoulders. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly does he do for the show? I mean, no, not to accuse you of nepotism. Nepotism? Who told you of that? Was it Matt Tech? No, no, I, I, I just meant... Nothing. Anyways, it can't be nepotism. After all, I'm not the one who hired him. <laughs> who hired him? Oh, man. Hey, you're on at five. Y yeah, yeah, I'll be right there. Thank you, Mr. Macrave. Sir. Good luck with your show. Charles! <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, it's about that boy you've hired. Matt, too. And that little college friend of his. Yes, I, I just wanted to warn you. Whatever it is you want to do with him, I recommend you do it quick. College boy is starting to... sniff around. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's about time, Highlands. <laughs> Welcome, that's about time loops, isn't it? Groundhog Day. You talked about time. I am. Um, yeah, alright, time loop movies. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow. It's a great movie. I mean, Tom Cruise has an amazing performance, a lot of action packed scenes, a lot of comedy bits that they managed to sprinkle together. And most of all, it's paced amazing, so you'll be on the edge of your seat the whole time. Source Code is another great movie. Jake Gyllenhaal gives a great performance. He brings a real character arc to this film that already has amazing special effects, and then... Um... You know, this one is oddly specific. Are you, are you running out of ideas? What? No. I mean, couldn't you have come up with something more interesting? This is your job. I, I have the hardest job on the show. Dealing with you... You can just watch Groundhog Day. It's way more holiday appropriate anyway. Why don't you just watch something stupid? Like yourself in a mirror? Is this just about your your own little time loop film, that film you made junior year for the Golden Reel a across the- Beyond the Forever Scape was an excellent movie! You know what? I'm done. I'm done helping you live out your little high school fantasy. Don't call me anymore, don't bring me on to do your job, because I'm done! Ha <laughs> ha! I don't believe that for a second. A second, like, clock, Groundhog Day. Uh, Thanks for sticking with us here. Be careful. The roads might get a little icy soon. <laughs> Back to you, Jacob and Danielle. Thanks, Matt. And finally today, for the first time this year, let's check in with the TV One class and reporter Bridget Bachowski, who takes a look at a sweet treat that is literally blowing up in people's mugs and all over the internet. People's initial thoughts when they hear the word bomb typically aren't very positive. However, this winter, the word bomb is taking a new turn with chocolate and fluffy marshmallows. Hot chocolate bombs are taking over the world faster than you can refresh your homepage. They're sweet, they're delicious, but unfortunately, they're hard to get. Hot chocolate bombs became a trend thanks to the app TikTok. Despite their popularity and wild success, there have been some mixed reviews about this sweet treat from the lucky people who got the chance to try it out. When I tried it, it was actually really bad because it was really too sweet and I couldn't mix it into the milk enough, like it was just chunky. I saw them on TikTok, I saw some people were making them and then I saw in stores some people were selling them. I don't think they're worth the hype, I feel like social media like TikTok kind of overhypes it, like it's just stupid. Even though there may be some negative reviews, that doesn't cancel out the fact that it's incredibly difficult for chocolate shops to keep up with the demand for the hot chocolate bombs. Iris House of Sweets in Wyckoff made over 6,000 chocolate bombs in the month of December, and they all sold out within hours. 
However, expert chocolatier Manuela from Chocolates with Love in Ramsey has yet to make this sweet treat. I can't remember anything like this since the Chia Pet. So I've heard you tried to make these yourself. Was it easy? Not at all because I didn't have the mold and I used plastic cups and it was very difficult to get the chocolate out. As demands just keep increasing for this popular item, there's no way to know if chocolatiers will be able to manage and provide the people with them. Even people of all ages are trying to create their own bombs at home to hop onto the super hot trend. Lucky for me, I got my hands on one of these treasured chocolate bombs. Hopefully chocolatiers and chocolate stores will get the supplies soon to start selling them. From NHTV, I'm Bridget Bruchalski. Thanks Bridget. Stay tuned for more from the TV One class and shows all month. And that's our show for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember to stay safe. See you next time and good morning, Highlands.